Modern day grocery stores have evolved over the years far beyond what they used to be. Today's modern grocery is more likely to be part big box retailer, part community center, part food processor, part restaurant even. And as those stores evolve, the activities under the roof put a greater strain on the HVAC systems. And that's particularly true even before this pandemic and the public's demand for cleaner air. Today, we'd like to talk to Cam Phil's food and beverage segment manager, Patrick Lally, about one grocery store chain that got a head start on providing clean air at a lower cost, even before the pandemic hit. So Patrick, take a moment if you would, introduce us to yourself before we get into the details. Thanks, Mark. Yes, my name is Patrick Lally. I'm the food and beverage segment manager for Camphill USA. Uh, prior to coming to Camphill, I worked in medical device contract manufacturing. Um, the majority of those years were spent working with OEMs that had applications which required some type of um, air filtration component, whether it was to protect their equipment or protect um, patients from things like harmful bacteria or viruses. Great. Thanks, Patrick. So I've got here a case study that you worked on, and here it talks about this grocery store chain that installed better filters, gave themselves cleaner air at a lower cost. So I guess the first question that comes to mind, it's sort of like getting your cake and eating it too. So what's the magic behind that? Can you tell us about that? Sure, yeah, there really wasn't any magic behind it. I mean, I think it came together for two re main reasons. One, um, Camphill's engineering team had the, um, the plan and the desire to create the highest performing pleated panel filter on the market in our 3030 Dual 9. Um, and secondly, you know, there was a couple regional store uh, maintenance managers that, um, you know, understood the technology behind the filter and, and wanted to see for themselves in real life if, if our filter performed as we claimed that it did. Um, so, you know, we worked with the, um, the regional managers to put together a test protocol. And at the end of the day, um, well, actually at the end of 365 days, um, yeah, they were convinced that the, the dual nine was going to be a game changer for them. Okay, so you mentioned you put together a test protocol. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Can you kind of fill us in about that test protocol call? What were the, uh, what did that consist of? Sure. So um, one manager had 150 stores, um, which were all on a traditional calendar based change out schedule. In this instance, they were changing filters every three months. Um, you know, some of the uh, systems were using what I would best describe as economy grade pleated filters. Others were using um, roll media that was cut to size. Essentially, it was whatever the installer had on their truck that day. That's what they were going to, you know, go up on the roof and install into the, the, um, the units. So to start the evaluation, what we did at all 150 stores, we put in brand new air filters. Um, at 100 of the stores, we installed the two types that I just described, the economy grade. And at the remaining 50, we installed Camphill's 3030 Dual 9. Um, and the claim that we made, or I, or I should say the guarantee that we made was that the Dual 9 would last for a full year and perform at a high level throughout. Okay, so then how did you specifically monitor the performance of the filter? How did you measure that? Uh, good question. So there was two things we, we monitored. Uh, the first thing was pressure drop over time. And the second was the condition of the coils immediately downstream of the air filters. Okay, well, so so pressure drop is something that's relatively easy to measure with a portable manometer or maybe even a magnet helic gauge, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, the condition of coils is kind of subjective. So how did you determine the condition of the coils and which one was performing better than the other. So, yeah, it's a good point. It is subjective relatively. So we, we had to do that visually. So what we did, um, as I mentioned, we installed brand new filters at all 150 stores. When we did that, we, we took uh, photos of the coils to, to create a baseline. Um, and, and really throughout the whole test, over the 12 months, the, the condition of the coils um, varied widely. So for the filters that I described earlier, the, the economy grade pleated filters, the uh, coils remain relatively clean, but one of the issues we ran into with those is over a very or a relatively short period of time, um, static pressure began to increase. In some instances, between two and three months, it got to the point where the pressure was so high they had to change the filters out. 
Um, so essentially the, the units were being starved of air. Uh, the opposite happened with the uh, pleated roll, uh, roll cut to size media um, that I mentioned earlier. Pressure drop stayed very low on those, but the reason being there was a significant amount of bypass. So if you can imagine all that air getting past the filters, the, the, um, the coils were noticeably dirtier. And then to top it off, you had a significant amount of unfiltered air entering the building. Okay, well that's, so that you had, you tested three filters, that's two of them. One restricted airflow and kept clean coils. One had bypass and had dirty coils, but how did your uh, D9 filter, what did it, uh, how did it perform? So the dual nine over the course of the 12 months, the uh, average pressure drop remained low. It performed very well. I think on average, it was somewhere between two tenths of an inch increase throughout the, the whole year. Um, and the coils remain clean, which is a good indicator that we weren't getting a lot of air bypassing um, the filters. So that was the two metrics that we looked at and it performed, it performed fantastic. Um, the end result there was we were able to reduce the store's um, filter related expenses by 40%. And, um, and that's operating expenses. So if you go from changing a filter four times a year down to one time a year, it's gonna have a, a pretty significant impact. So it was a, an all in all, it was a, a great success. Yeah, I, I would agree. If you can cut 40% in operational costs, that's significant. Now, let me circle back to something I'd said in the very beginning. I said, it almost seems like magic in that the stores were able to get their cake and they were able to eat it too, meaning that they got longevity, cost savings, and they got cleaner air. And you said it really wasn't magic, but would you kind of go into specifically what it is about your D9 filter that is designed differently than the other two style of filters that you had talked about? Can you go into a little bit more detail on that? Sure, you know, back when Camfil Engineering developed the Dual 9, it was created, um, with function, solely with function in mind. They weren't concerned about first cost, but really the total cost of ownership. And they wanted to create the highest performing uh, pleated filter on the market. And they succeeded in doing that. Um, you know, there's a few unique design characteristics that allow the filter perform to perform so well. Um, first thing is the filter media itself. It's a dual density, high lofted media. So um, it has, you know, very heavy or high dust loading capacity, which allows the pressure drop to remain so low over time. Um, another, you know, key design feature is the, uh, the, the pleat um, orientation. We strayed from the conventional um, V-shaped pleats to a U-shaped pleat, and basically what that does is it allows um, the filter media, all the surface area of the filter media to be utilized. And then I guess the last thing I would point out, Mark, is that, um, you know, if a filter is going to be in use for 12 months, it needs to be built very, you know, robustly. And so we use strong beverage board uh, material for the housing as well as a wire backing to, to maintain pleat support. Okay, okay, thanks. That kind of clears up a little bit. It's just clearly a, uh, a higher quality built and, and cleverly designed and engineered filter. Now we were talking earlier, you had mentioned that there was a little bit of a surprise that came about at the end of the, the 365 day protocol testing that you went through. Um, one of your store managers or maybe one of your regional managers made a comment and I think you were a little bit surprised by that because you'd mentioned that to me earlier. Can you tell us a little bit, what, what was it that kind of surprised them and you too? What, what, did, what happened that you didn't have any idea? Yeah, it was something I didn't think of. He made the comment that um, his stores, he noticed less roof damage. You know, and he attributed that to not having to go up there four times a year, so you had a lot less roof traffic. And, you know, um, he even commented that, you know, not that they had a lot of accidents, but he thought that it could be a benefit to have you know less accidents, especially you know this time of year. Not today in the Midwest; it's a beautiful day, but I think two or three weeks ago, you know, we were in uh, sub-freezing blizzard conditions, so the risk of going up at, you know on the roof to change out a filter could be pretty high. But yeah, that was something I, I hadn't really thought of. But um, but yeah, it's definitely an ancillary benefit. Yeah, that that's true. I, that's because uh, yeah, Patrick, we live in the same state, and you're right; it was miserable a couple of weeks ago. And if you'd have had a filter change out scheduled, uh, there's no way anyone's climbing up ladders to get on top of that roof. And if you end up having to put it off for two or three weeks and you were late to begin with, uh, well, that's a problem. And it sounds like your filter offers a little bit of insurance policy, so to speak, on your change out schedule. 
Uh, Patrick, that's really good information. I hope all the other grocery stores and just retailers in general take a look at this filter. But if you could go ahead and uh, wrap this up for us. Appreciate your time again, Patrick. Thanks. Yeah, no, I thank you, Mark. And um, yeah, I appreciate the time and, and uh, thanks again.